Good evening, and welcome to University Baptist Church on this Christmas Eve, December 24th, 2021. For anyone who doesn't know me, my name is David Tomasachi, and I'm the Director of Music here at University Baptist Church. Well, friends, those are the words of introduction I always used in our past virtual worship services, and they're words I certainly didn't expect to have to be saying today. We had planned to gather together in person at UBC for our Christmas Eve service of lessons and carols, but unfortunately, due to COVID exposure in our choir rehearsal earlier this week, we made the difficult but prudent decision to cancel our in-person service. But we are still gathered together this evening from afar to worship Christ, the newborn King. I am very thankful for the technology and ability of this day and age that makes this virtual worship service possible. And I would furthermore like to thank Reverend Barbara Bullock, Leslie Floyd, and Renee and Mike Arvola for jumping in at a moment's notice to record our scripture readings and sermon. Each Sunday during Advent, we have been lighting a candle. First, one candle for hope, then one candle for peace, a candle for joy, and this past Sunday, a candle for love. Tonight, we light the Christ candle. Many of you I know have Advent wreaths with candles, and many of you, like me, do not. But if this past year and three quarters has taught us anything, it's to improvise. If you don't have three purple candles and one pink one and one white one, any candle will do. I'll be lighting this candle as I invite you to join me in our Advent candle lighting liturgy and then to join our past section leaders in singing the candle lighting hymn, One Candle is Lit. Rejoice, people of God, the light has come into the world. God has been born among us. With the company of heaven and with sounds of great joy, you come to us. This is the time of light and resplendent joy. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and a child would be born to us. The evangelist Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly song of the angels, glory, peace on earth and goodwill. John declared that this great light is Christ, the word made flesh. This great light lives among us. By it, we behold God's glory, full of grace and truth. At Christ's nativity, we now rejoice. God, our life and light, thank you for coming this night to us. Thanks for touching all heaven and earth with your splendor. In every corner of the world, shine this night with your peace. In every corner of our hearts, shine this night with your grace. Amen.
Now, let us hear the words from Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 4. The people walking in the darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as war warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Reading the 96th Psalm from the New Revised Standard Version. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. 
strength, and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Good evening, UBC, and Merry Christmas Eve. Today's third lesson comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Merry Christmas, UBC family. I know this is not what we had hoped we would be doing this Christmas Eve. I know that we were hoping we could all be gathered in our beautiful sanctuary, but we decided when this pandemic started that we would be a safe congregation. And with the outbreak of one of our, uh, with our uh, within our choir, uh, we decided that there was just too much too much risk for the rest of the musicians and for the congregation. What I can say is in the hospital, it is uh, Omicron is raging and the positivity rates um, every day are just increasing at rates greater than it was last year at the same time. So we feel that it is time to be a safe congregation again. And we made the very difficult decision is to um, not meet in person, but we have now learned all sorts of skills like how to meet on Zoom and through YouTube. And so we are still the family of Christ. We are still the beloved University Baptist Church congregation, and we will move forth celebrating our Lord's birth uh, however we can do it. Um, so that doesn't stop us from being faithful. So today's scripture, um, or this tonight, as I was actually thinking this week, I thought I would be doing uh, Sunday the 26th, but as it turns out, I needed to do it tonight. But I have been thinking of a verse from Isaiah this whole week, and it popped in my head. And as things happen, um, sometimes God just speaks to us in, in quiet ways. So let me read, I would like to read this uh, scripture from Isaiah. It's from chapter 43, verses 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people who I formed for myself, 
that they might declare my praise. So here we have Isaiah uh, referencing the, ex the exodus from Egypt by the Israelites. Um, he, he is talking about, you know, parting the waters and, and the, you know, cutting off the Pharaoh's army and destroying the army and the, the fact that he promises them rivers in the desert and that they can move forth. And that this is the God who brings, the, who delivers the people. But there is a, I am, behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Isaiah is often referenced as part of the story of Jesus. It is often looked to by the Christian community as a foreshadowing, as the prophecy of who Jesus was, Isaiah is used to validate Christ as the Messiah. And what is something new, more new than a newborn baby, than a baby born to these ordinary people in an extraordinary place like a manger? And who was there to really perceive it? We have some stories, and fortunately, Luke writes this beautiful narrative of the birth of Christ mm -hmm. and how there were these portents and signs that this was the Messiah. And some mm -hmm. seem to understand that this was important. But it doesn't really say that this is the Messiah. They think this is a king. This is something new. And they're all trying to understand how this changes the world through the birth of this baby. You see, God comes to us in ways that are new. God does things that change our perceptions, perception of things. For the Israelites, it was God came and parted the waters and told them to leave Egypt and go into this wilderness where they would eventually find a promised land. But God comes in and changes our human perception of things in ways that are unexpected, like a baby born in a manger. Mm -hmm. This morning, I, I subscribed to Dan Rather. I'm an old school girl, like Dan Rather. Mm -hmm. And he was recounting this beautiful moment in our story of when we first uh, when we had astronauts who first, in 1968, I think, who first left the bounds of Earth and took a picture of the Earth from outer space, and they called it Earthrise. And it was a moment where we really saw this big, beautiful marble of a planet just floating in the inky blackness of space. And the astronauts, astronauts recounted, you know, it wasn't long before they lost all orientation. They had to figure out what was north and south. They couldn't tell from their perspective at first because there really isn't a north and south. And from that perspective, and there were no boundaries. There were no lines, political lines drawn to, to say where did this country or that country begin and end. From the perspective of the moon, the earth is just a big, beautiful marble. And we are all fragilely living with the benefit of gravity and the atmosphere living on this planet. And Dan rather wondered if that wasn't a moment when as citizens of the earth, we started to truly understand that we needed to take care of the earth, that this is the first time that maybe ecology and all these things about worrying about um, how this, plan, this planet is cared for and its future really started to sink in, that our responsibility to the earth is something that is for all of us. But this one photo, this, this new perspective started perhaps changing a perspective 
changed our understanding of who we were in the world. And I think God does that to us as well, that this is how our spiritual lives are changed, that God comes in and somehow changes our perception, but then also changes our identity, um, our spiritual identity, that God somehow speaks to our souls in a new way. I can remember years ago, I was called uh, as a hospital chaplain, I was called, and this was different place, different city, different state. And I was called to the bedside um, by the staff. They were really upset um, that this, there was a patient who was clearly at the end of life. They had done everything they could do. And yet they had what they felt was a really ultra religious family. And they had a concern if, that there was gonna be conflict because this family was praying hard and definitely, you know, they just were worried that they'd be able to accept this death that was imminent. And so they were preparing for conflict, but they also didn't understand what the family was doing. They were doing something new. They didn't understand it. And so they called me. And so I came to, to the family and certainly the room was filled with people and it was clear that um, there was at least two church leaders, but they were Christian, definitely. And there were two uh, church leaders in the room as well. I think they might've also been related to the family, mm -hmm. as I recall. But they, there was just, I don't know, 15, 20 people in the room. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the staff was really concerned because this family was speaking in tongues. There were, the person who was praying was praying in tongues and they just did not understand. They, they did not know what to do with that. And I've certainly seen people pray in tongues. Mm -hmm. I've, part, I've been people prayed over me with tongues and you know that, that was not um, new to me. Um, that did not concern me um, as an expression of their spirituality and their prayer. What was new for me was they had uh, an interpreter, and I had never seen that before. Mm -hmm. So they had the person speaking in tongues and they had a person who was the interpreter, which is exactly biblical. Mm -hmm. And that had never happened to me before. I'd never actually seen the person mm -hmm. being the interpreter for the, uh, uh, in the room. So that was new for me. Um, it was clear that the family was just praying hard and I think they were just very expressive and, and I think the staff just didn't quite know what to do with that. Um, but eventually we called a family meeting and um, to try to figure out what would be the next steps, what would be the next right thing to do for this patient. And so we all piled into this room and I was prepared for what I had experienced many, many, many times before, which is a you know, the faith leaders actually encouraging them to pray a prayer of faith for a miracle and that they just needed to pray harder and that this would happen and they just needed to be faithful. And that was my expectation because I had seen that so many times before. And, and that was the staff's expectation as well, that they were kind of bracing themselves for, you know, uh, this kind of probably maybe a conflict. Uh, with where things were headed and, and worried about um, and honestly concerned about the family and their ability to accept what they think they thought was inevitable. And as we sat in this room, the, they turned to the person who was speaking in tugs and to the interpreter um, to, to hear what they had to say. And the person was praying and the interpreter said, on behalf was praying and interpreting on the words of the patient. And what was what they the interpreter was saying as the patient was asking the family to let them go, that they were ready to be with the Lord, and that this patient was blessing them for everything they had done, and that they had as a family had been faithful, but now God was calling them home and they were ready to go and happy to be with the Lord, and that this was God's will. In all my years as a chaplain, I've never seen that. I've never heard those words spoken that way. 
that event has been singular in my experience. And it was sacred and it was beautiful and it was peaceful. And that family was blessed. They, they were blessed by those words. And I had to really try to rethink my own theology and I'm still working on it. Speaking in tongues is not part of my normal religious practice. I do not have that gift. I believe that there are people that do. Um, I've had people, I've had, I remember having a Lutheran pastor kind of tell me in secret, I speak in tongues, but don't tell anybody because my congregation would never understand it. I mean, so I've had people come to me who have this gift. They don't quite know what to do with it. Um, but I've never had not only speaking in tongues, but an interpreter. And it's biblical. I love to hold on to that story because it reminds me of so many things about what it means to be a spiritual person in this world is that God comes and speaks to us and changes us and challenges us to forget the former things and be ready for something new. And in this case, I needed a new way of thinking of what is religious and how God works and what's gonna happen and, and to be more open to the experiences presented before me. And here we are as a congregation on Christmas Eve on YouTube. We've spent the last couple of years trying to perceive what is the new thing that God is calling us to do. The one thread that I have held on to over the last couple of years is the fact that we feel like there is something new. I have to confess, three or four years ago, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure that we were maybe getting ready to uh, to close as a congregation, but I don't feel that way now. There's actually something that happened through COVID that helped me shift my own thinking that we are being called to something new. Um, I think that our ability to let go of so many <coughs> physical things or has helped maybe release some energy to say what, what is possible? Um, what is the new? I think for me, just the fact that we have been able to hold a bond virtually and over the last several months says to me that there is something important that God has held together with us for whatever is new. And we are struggling to perceive it. That is our call right now, is to perceive this new thing. We've called a new pastor. He'll be joining us in January. And we are being called into something new. God has already planted that seed. God has already got our future ahead of us. And we have somehow stayed faithful and held on to one another. Mm. My blessing and Christmas wish for all of you Mm. is that, all, that we will begin to see more clearly and be able to live into this new spiritual truth or this near, new spiritual future that God is calling to us. Mm. And that if there are personal things for you in this next year and weeks ahead, or maybe in the near past, then you will perceive that this is a change for you, that God has spoken to you and changed your perception for whatever new is around the corner. As a community, as a congregation, we won't meet again. We will meet face to face once we get through this next surge. And my guess is there may be times where we come together and then have to through a surge, uh, meet more safely like this. But we will hold on to each other and we will perceive the new future that God is calling us to be.
may God bless you on this Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day and in the months and days ahead. Amen.
Thank you.